Good morning and welcome to worship with the First Parish in Lincoln. We are so glad you are here today. Today we are continuing a treasured tradition of a children's pageant. They've asked us to do something special. So I see many of you are already doing it, but if you haven't got a costume, don't go away right now because we've got some great announcements, but I wanted to be a shepherd, but all I could come up with was a little sheep. We are very excited that you are with us this morning and we're gonna have a chance to participate with our costumes on as we go along this morning. We invite you as always to put your prayers into the little chat box at the bottom of your screen and Sarah will read those during our prayer time today. And let us begin. We have some wonderful announcements. We're gonna start with holiday announcements. And Deanna, why don't you lead us off? Hi, I'm Deanna LaFerriere on behalf of the Deacons. And even though all the slots are filled for today's uh, candlelit walk through the sanctuary at 4.30, we welcome all the rest of you to join us from 4.30 to five virtually to see our beautiful candlelit sanctuary and glimpses of some of our beautiful people walking through while listening to Ian playing live. You'll be able to find the Zoom link on our website to join. And I am going to pass it over to Melinda. Good morning. The Solstice Committee and the Deacons invite you to be a part of our creative and experimental virtual winter solstice meditation that's happening on Monday at 7 p.m. this Monday, tomorrow. The Zoom link is in our newsletter and happy solstice to you. And now to Jenny. Thanks, Melinda. <laughs> I love these costumes. I want to invite, invite you to join uh, us on Christmas Eve at 4.30 p.m. on Zoom. We're gonna gather as a community and have a chance to be together in those coffee hour type rooms and greet one another and say Merry Christmas and be prepared to begin worship together at 5 p.m. Uh, we'll watch a pre-recorded service and please bring with you your snowball candle if you haven't received one yet, you can pick it up at the porch outside the Stearns room. And if you're coming to the walkthrough today, you'll receive a snowball candle then, but we're gonna, we're gonna light those together on Christmas Eve. They were handmade and uh, they're very special. So Christmas Eve, 4.30 on Zoom. All of this information is available on the website. If you go to the front page of our website, you'll see links to all of our holiday services. And Joan Kimball. Please join Ben Wells and me next Sunday at 10 o'clock on Zoom for our traditional meditation service that we have the last Sunday in December every year. Following a brief guided meditation, we'll read together the native player to the earth is found in braided sweetgrass. Following the, following the reading, we will have a meta practice to send prayers to uh, a person, groups of people, plants, animals, and Mother Earth. And I now turn it over to Barbara Slater. Hello, I'm Barbara Slater, and I'm here to shepherd you through to writing your Lenten booklet, whether on your computer, your iPad, or your yellow pad. We need your contributions. I'm looking right at a lot of you who've done wonderful contributions in the past. So if you're not sure about doing it, you can sign up for a writing workshop with Barbara O'Neill, January 11th or January 18th or both. Start on one, polish it on the other, but get it to us by January 20th. Thank you. And I'll now turn it over to Joan Mansfield. And this is Joan Mansfield from the Music Committee bringing you good tidings. I have some um, good news, although we won't be able to have our, our usual live in Lincoln Center performance of the Messiah this year. You don't have to miss the Messiah. You can see and hear Ian Watson and the Handel and Haydn Society performing the Messiah tonight on WGBH2 television at 7 p.m. Uh, it's also available streaming at 7 p.m. and then beyond that through the Christmas season 
through WGBH YouTube, their Facebook, WGBH.org, Classical WCRB, and of course the Handel and Haydn Society.org. So don't miss the Messiah. They've been doing it since the 1850s. They also have a, another wonderful perf performance by Ian Watson and the Handel and Haydn Society of a Baroque Christmas. It begins streaming Tuesday, December 22nd at 3 p.m. So look for that on the Handel and Haydn Society, Handel and Haydn .org and the same sites uh, as before. And now I'll turn this over to Ralph Smith. On behalf of the Outreach Committee, I ask you to support the local charity Watch This Christmas. We have been nine months into a pandemic and we may feel exhausted, but we can gain strength by looking outward. At Christmas, we are asking you to look outward to help some of our neediest neighbors. People who don't have the resources to provide their daily bread, please support the Christmas offering or watch. Thank you. And now we have an announcement from Gus Brown. Okay, hi, I'm a little bit out of the pageant thing because I've gone into Dickens and here I am imitating Mr. Fezziwig. Um, it's that time of year again, except instead of being visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley, we're being visited by COVID-19. And it's reminding me of a bumper sticker that I saw and have never gotten out of my mind. And it says simply, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. So here we are at that time of year when we just may, not you and your family, but there may be people around you who have relatives or friends who might be just a bit difficult. So Tuesday night at 7.30, Jane O'Rourke and I are having a Zoom um, that everybody is welcome to. And it's going to be a brief but relevant to some of us review of things that you can do to take more control over your Thanksgiving well, your Christmas holiday, um, so that instead of being like dinner with the gross ghost of Christmas yet to come, it will be more like the Fezziwigs Christmas. So for that dinner you're anticipating uh, with people who don't follow your grandmother's admonition to never talk about those three subjects, and we know what they are, uh, Tuesday, 730, we hope to see you there. Thank you. All right. So now we get to wave to one another and scroll around and see what all these amazing costumes are. Good morning, First Parish in Lincoln. Wow. We have some angels and some animals, big sheep there. All right. Let us now deepen into worship with our opening words. This morning, we will tell the ancient story, the nativity, a story of the birth of Jesus. We imagine that we have not heard it before, that like the babe, it is all new, wonderful, and full of possibility. We imagine that this ancient story is happening right here and now. We imagine that after years of hearing stories about men and women bowing down before kings and emperors, we finally hear a story in which wise kings kneel down before one tiny newborn child. We imagine a story about the transforming power of love. We imagine a day in the future when people really believe that love is more powerful than war, that poor and humble people are as important and powerful as the most famous and powerful rulers, and peace hovers over all the earth. And now would you join me in singing our opening hymn, Ding Dong Merrily on High. Oh, 
Please join us as we say our covenant. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of all. And it's time to check in on the sanctuary to see where our little figures might have gotten to. Our Advent reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Luke tells us, In the sixth month, month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a maiden engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The maiden's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a maiden? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will, to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. We light these candles to kindle the warmth of love. We come now to the time in our service that we set aside for silent and spoken prayer. After our prayer hymn by Ian, we will have a moment of silence followed by the reading of the prayers you have sent in. There is still time if you'd like to use the chat feature to send in any prayers you have today. We now lift up the prayers of this community. A prayer for Gideon Panter, who's very sick and hospitalized with COVID. A prayer for his recovery. For those who are hungry, 
facing eviction, those who are ill, we pray. A prayer of healing and strength for Becca Fasciano's brother, Jeff, who is sick with COVID. We pray blessings on the Boynton's grandson, Gregory, and his new bride, Kelsey, who were married in the midst of the blizzard on Friday. Prayers of love and strength for all those receiving medical treatment. A prayer for Paula Waterman's daughter, Caroline, for strength and for love. A prayer of strength, grace, and courage to all of us during this holiday season. For strength for Heather Ring's uncle who is hospitalized with COVID in Maine. A prayer from Joey that his Gaga would feel better. A prayer that we will all be together again in person this time next year. Let us hold on to that thought as we go through this long winter. A prayer for those walking the recovery path. For those of us who are in isolation and alone over the holiday. A prayer for Marianne Hale's cousin, Laura, who seems to be getting better. A prayer for Jason Pacano's mother, who is currently in an ICU with COVID. A prayer of gratitude for the promise of the newly approved vaccines. We hold these prayers of our community in love and strength and gratitude, all those that have been spoken aloud and that have been held in the silence of our hearts. Amen. Merciful God, we ask that you help us to let go of our worries and hear our prayers. Our prayers are plentiful and we are feeling overwhelmed at times. We pray that you and our ancestors are smiling down on the angels among us that have been showing up for each other this past year. Dear God, let us be reminded that we are the fortunate ones. Although we are overwhelmed with worry and our prayers are heavy, at the same time, we can't help but feel overwhelmed by comfort and joy to be led at this time by our brilliant and beloved staff. Although it is a time of great distress, remind us that we have not lost faith. We know that we have you as our guide. Hope and faith in God has not been canceled. We pray to remain gentle with ourselves through this season of life. We pray that when the days, weeks, months all blend together, we'll remember all the ways we've stepped up and restored our faith in each other. Your sweet spirit has blessed us and brought us together as a mighty community. Our strength comes from our great goodness, compassion, creativity, love and kindness towards one another. We've stepped up to help our fellow neighbors in their time of need, and we are growing, learning together as a community. We pray that we can continue on that path of growth to live righteously, find ways to take action to support the oppressed and call for justice in all the world. We pray for your help to continue showing us how to be vulnerable and together in ways that we've never been before to see each other in a time when we can't be seen. In this magical season of new beginnings and stars meeting up in the sky, we pray that we can continue to come together and be guided by your grace and the light of God in each of us. Amen. At this time, 
When we know the needs are so great, we appreciate your generosity so much. You may donate, donate online at fplincoln.org slash donate or mail a check to the church at 14 Bedford Road, Lincoln, Mass. Thank you. Good morning, mm -hmm. beloved community. Before I share our pageant this morning, I want to mention a few technical tips. If you look in the upper right corner of your computer screen, you can switch to speaker view. This will allow you to see the pageant and the narrators who will be narrating live. Turning your volume up and keeping your microphone muted will help the sound quality. I ask for your patience as Sarah and I work together sharing screens to bring different elements of our production to view. Thank you. And who would have thought a Christmas pageant would start with those words? Since last March, I've tried to live and work with the idea that as much as things have changed, our day-to-day -day lives, our workaday world, our routines and our traditions just need a dash of creativity and a little elbow grease to continue. Maybe not as usual, but in some form or other. And I know I'm not alone as evidenced by the sight of all of us here and these screens. I see some people zooming in from home offices and I see some home classrooms as well. A few of us are alone or are zooming in as couples distanced from family physically for now. Your worship team has set up home sanctuaries and altars and presentation areas. We are making do. We are persevering. We are seeing ourselves and each other through. And I'm pleased to say no pandemic, no COVID-19, no physical distancing, no can't do that the usual way obstacle can rain on our pageant parade. Can't shepherd the cat, uh, kids, not cats, through rehearsals in the parish house, no problem. No gathering in the sanctuary for a performance, okay, challenge accepted. And here we are this morning. For this morning, I ask you to come dressed as you see yourself in the nativity story. And I appreciate everybody who really went all out. And I really appreciate everybody in general showing up and being here this morning. I was a teenager in the early 80s and can't help comparing my request to come dressed as you see yourself in the nativity story to the essay assignment in the movie, The Breakfast Club. In that movie, the assistant principal of a high school asks a handful of students attending Saturday detention to write an essay titled, Who Do You Think You Are? And so a journey of discovery begins. And now our journey of discovery begins. As our opening words said, let us place ourselves into this moment as if we've never been here before new to the experience and wonder this season brings. Let us share our first parish in Lincoln's Christmas pageant 2020 edition. So I wonder, Catherine, what can you tell us about this story? What do we celebrate? I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. Gee, I don't know. Alright guys, you're a little bit older. You've been into pageant before. What do you think? Well, let me see. I'll read from the beginning of Luke, the dedication. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, most excellent first parish, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which we have been instructed. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, each in the town of his origin. Okay, Caesar, say it with me. All the world should be registered and pay taxes to me. Joseph and uh, Jesus. Um, no, Jesus isn't born yet. Where is Jesus? In Mary's tummy. Yeah. <laughs> and but he was from God. He was from God. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. So Mary and Joseph on a donkey rode to Bethlehem, there was, but there was no room in the inn. They were going to the inn, so they had to stay in a barn. Um, Mary had a baby named Jesus. Um, he lay in a um, ox trough. Okay. Your turn. Have you no place for us? Now the innkeepers. There is no room, but here is my stable. And the Marys, we thank you for your kindness. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. And who knew that Cece was there to help with the delivery? And who are you holding? Uh oh. And the shepherds saw the star and they saw the angel. Region, there were shepherds living in the fields.
keeping watch over their flock by night. Oh. Let's hear it from our animals. Ba moo nay cluck quack woof meow. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Okay, angels, say this part with me. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, okay, everyone, say this part with me. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. did say multitude. Join us as we sing while shepherds watch their flocks by night.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Okay, shepherds, let's, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And the wise men came. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Say it with me, Magi, wise ones and kings. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Let us now sing, We Three Kings. And the three kings came to give Jesus gifts. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid their homage. They opened their treasure chest. They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. I had to stop sharing to unmute. Sorry about that. And so 
we find Mary and Joseph lying and the child lying in the manger. Let us join together to sing Away in a Manger. Say that again for me, Joey. And that's basically it. So my friends, <laughs> well done everybody involved. So now, whether you're dressed or not, who do you think you are? We are people of faith, of wonder, of science. We are seekers, adventurers, witnesses, bringers of news. We are parents overwhelmed by the circumstances in which we find ourselves, also feeling truly blessed with our children, knowing the journey will be challenging, but joyful to be on its path. We are angels showing up with news at once intimidating and reassuring, getting the message through. We are shepherds, simple people, having faith and recognizing it's time to leave the fields and attend to what is happening, bearing witness to wonders unimagined. We are magi, wise and wondering, following the science of the day, hoping to journey to new understanding and always seeking truth. We are stars, silently guiding, 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 keeping the light alive for those traveling in darkness. We are the babe who is love. Love incarnate, reaching out with all we have to better the world around us. We are all these things, no matter how we dressed this morning. We are a community of faith and caring. God bless us, everyone.
please join me in our call to ministry. We go forth from the worship of God to be faithful to the vision of Jesus, to affirm each person's dignity and to cherish the living earth. Go, tell what you have seen and heard here this morning. Tell the good news. Love has come. Love has come among us. Amen. Please join me in singing our postlude. Let us proclaim joy to the world. <laughs> Thank you. 